everyone, my name is Vanessa. I'm a teacher here at Starry Art School. Thank you for coming to our online interactive theory classes. Now, thank you for coming to our New Year's Eve show. First up, I'm going to show you guys a little video to just introduce Starry's time traveling adventures, who Starry is and where he comes from. Okay, here we go. <laughs> She's around the corner, so good luck, buddy. Hi, 
Happy New Year, everyone! I am so excited for the next year. It's been such an interesting year this year, but I am so excited for next year. It's going to be a brand new year. Everything's going to be good. Okay? So I wish you a Happy New Year. Bye! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy new year. My real world friends create all those kind of beautiful artwork. I have so many friends. Are we looking at the moon cycles right now, Starry? Oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm in your virtual clock traveling into space. I've never dreamed of traveling into space before. You guys, this is so cool. Next stop, Sun! Really fast to travel, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Wait, are we watching the sunset now? And it's like we're traveling through time. It's like we're just, just speeding through the sun cycles. That is super cool, guys. Oh my goodness, Starry, I'm amazed. Vanessa, do you know the cycle? We need to talk about it! Okay, alright. Now guys, we're just gonna have a little Q&A. This is amazing. Okay, now we've just looked a little bit about the moon and the sun cycle. We're just gonna talk a little bit about that. Now, who has seen, who has gone out into the nighttime and they saw a really, really bright moon? But then sometimes they go out on another day and it's like a half moon or a crescent moon yeah that's right so you can see different types of moons okay now why do you think the moon have different shapes throughout this yeah that's good yes everyone has seen different moon shapes as well now why do you think the moon shows different shapes in the sky over the period of the time yes that's right shadows that's good very smart guys the moon doesn't actually give off any light now where does the light of the moon come from then if it doesn't come from the moon that is crazy. Now, does it, do you turn a light, you turn a light switch and then the moon will bright? <laughs> no, it's actually, yes, the sun. That is correct, you guys. The moon actually gets its light from a reflection from the sun. Now, depending on where the moon, earth and sun are, as the earth rotates around the sun, and then as the moon rotates around the earth, we can see that it forms shadows. Okay, and over the course, of x amount of days we can see that the moon has shadows okay and then we can see different shapes now who knows the exact amount of days it takes for the moon to return back to a full cycle any any guesses or anyone who knows from the last time they were here we talked a little bit about this <laughs> um a uh, good good guess 365 days in a year but how many days does it take for a moon to come back to its main cycle? Like if it's full, how many days does it come back? Yes, a month, 30 days. 30 days is very close. It's actually 29.5 days, so 29 and a half days. Very close, that's correct. It does take 29 and a half days. And as you can see, you know, um, the moon, sometimes you get really cool natural phenomenon such as an eclipse, which is when the sun and the moon and the earth all align and that's when you get a complete cover of the sun 
during the day. It's like when the moon covers the entirety of the sun. It's actually very scary and very cool. Has anyone ever seen an eclipse before? Hmm. Anybody seen any eclipses? <laughs> nope. I think some are bound to happen in a few years or something. Oh, that's cool. So being Justin to have seen. You once saw blood moon. Oh, that's amazing. And Jeannie, Jeannie has seen eclipse. Wow, that is really cool. Because those eclipses are very rare. All right. Now, once we talked about these two cycles, right? Can anybody think of any other cycles that exist in nature? Any any information, any guesses, any other solar eclipse? Yes, any other cycles in nature that exist? Okay, we have the moon cycle and then we have the sun cycle. Yeah, we have the water cycle. Very good. We do have the water cycle. Very good. Very nice. Um, you know, if you look at my background, what kind of cycles does this relate to? Tides. Yes, we do have tides and we have water cycle. Very good. Now, if we see the different you know, plant cycle and we have nature cycle. Very good, guys. Sun cycle. Yes. And then what about when it's really cold and it gets really hot and it's like really windy and then the, and then the leaves, they turn orange. What kind of cycle is that? It gets really hot. It's really hot. Because it's really hot. Seasons, yes, that's right. Jimmy, that's correct. Now, very good, guys. Yes, that is the season cycle. Now, um, Miss Annie, would you like to show the amazing plant cycle and season cycle videos now? Yes. Yes, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Um, there we go. Hi, Vanessa, you're back. Ah, I'm inside the emoji clock. That is so cool. Now, how many seasons are there in a year, guys? As we can see here, um, four, that's good. Now the year is divided into four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And each season lasts around three months. As you know, seasons occur and change because of the Earth's travel around the sun. Now, as you know, the Earth goes around the sun and we get different amounts of sunlight, whether in your Northern Hemisphere or in the Southern Hemisphere. And now as we tour around the sun, the axis is slightly, the earth is like moving side to side. And then that means that the northern hemisphere get different seasons. So example, right now we are in summer because it's Australia, we're in the southern hemisphere. Now, for example, yeah, in the northern hemisphere right now, snowing, very, very cold. Uh-huh, it's a time to have a look at the ancient clock. Sundown. All right. Do you know what this one is? Oh, that's beautiful. Wait, sorry. Uh, are we are we time traveling right now? Travel your hologram. Have a look at my shadow and the stone shadows. Have you seen my shadow, Vanessa? <laughs> yes, you just jump back. Shadow. And someone says this is a protractor. Um, not exactly. This is not exactly a protractor, guys. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, now after we talk about the plant cycles and seasons, we're talking about the clocks now because that relates to how ancient humans traveled around and lived their day-to-day -day life. That's right, sand clock. Yes, now it's not exactly called a sand clock, but it does contain sand. Can anybody have any other guesses on what this clock is called? Very good, an hourglass. Yes, that's correct. Very fast. <laughs> really fast. <laughs> yes. Wait, Starry. Uh, I can see the galaxy. Wait. What? You know where, where did I travel to? Where did you what take me, called? Starry? <laughs> Wait, guys. You know where is it? We're in ancient Egypt. Oh. Look, Vanessa. There are a lot of holes. Wait, I've never seen a clock like this before. What? No way. I don't get how this is a clock, but I'm gonna do some research from your book. Hey, Vanessa, look, candle clock. Now we're in Egypt. Oh, I think we've traveled again. Uh, I don't think we're in Egypt anymore, guys. I think I think we're somewhere else. Wait, where are we now? Whoa. Wait, we're in ancient China. Yeah. Why is the flame getting bigger? 
wait, I think it's becoming windy. I think the candle clock is... Yeah, wait, wait, sorry. You yeah. might need to help. It's so windy. It's outside. Oh. 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 Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> wait. That is terrible. Okay, wait. Next one. Let's look at another clock without it having the candle clock being blown out. That is so sad. Oh my goodness. Uh, how this clock work? Oh wow. This is beautiful. This is different from what we just saw, Starry. Wait, where are we now? Wait. I can see different lotus flowers. We're time traveling back, and all I can see are different clocks. Hey, Vanessa, how many clocks we introduced? All right, guys. Now, I think you you brought me to see five different clocks. We had the hourglass, we had the sundial, we had the candle clock, we had the incense clock, and we had the water clock. This one's so cool. Okay, right. Let's start from talking about this one. Now, has anybody seen these in real life before? Now, this one is actually called a sundial. Now, did you know that the earliest humans who used them and they were, they were found was from 1500 BC? Now, that was like at least 3000 years ago that we had sundials. Now, the earliest sundials were found using ancient and ancient Egyptian and Babylonian astronomy. They're measured as the sun, okay, remember we talked about the sun cycles as it moves across the sun, a sky like this. Now, as it moves, we have the shadows. And then over the course of the day, you know, it'll show this time. And then we just move, 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 move until it finishes over here. And then the sun sets, okay? Now, very, very interesting that we have all sorts of different civilizations have the sundials. We had them in, um, I think, in ancient Egypt. We had in ancient China. We had ancient Babylon. Lots of different types of clocks. Now, I have a really interesting question for you guys. Okay. Now, if, okay, in some, okay, imagine you're an ancient human. Imagine you're an ancient farmer, a farmer person, okay? And then you have, in wintertime, it's five o'clock and the sun sets at five o'clock. Now, in summertime, the sun sets at eight o'clock. Now, you know that it takes two hours, two hours to walk from your farm to your home. What time do you have to leave the farm to get home by sunset in summertime? Not in wintertime, summertime. Okay, in summertime. Yes. <laughs> All right, good, good answers. Okay. okay. And I want to share this website with everyone. <laughs> we have a list of questions on our Artibot lab. Very good, guys. So in summertime, the sun sets at 8 o'clock. In wintertime, sun sets at 5 o'clock. Do you want to get home? Before sunset in summertime, what time do you have to leave? It takes you two hours to walk back. <laughs> Very good. And I will be telling you guys the answers today because we have a little questionnaire and interactive website that you can play called Artibotland. And you guys can upload your artworks there from today at the end of the lesson and your name. And you can answer different questions and you submit answers. And the next time we'll reveal the answers for you guys. Very good, you guys. All right, now we're going to talk about the next clock now. Now, the next clock that we saw in ancient Egypt, right, the one that looked like a bowl, yeah, the one that looked like a bowl with many, many holes, right, that was actually the water clock, right? Now, as you know, with those holes, the water will come out of those holes, okay? Now, it's a device that was one of the earliest clocks invented that didn't rely on the sun. Because what happens if it's sunny or if you know if it's not sunny or it's cloudy or it's raining or it's snowing? You can't use a, you can't use a sundial, so you use a water clock instead. And this one was the oldest time measuring instrument. Now it had dating back to Babylon, ancient Egypt, and ancient Persia, around 16th century BC. Wow, that is many thousand years ago. Now apparently, some people, some historians claim that. Water clocks were invented in Ch ancient China from 4000 BC, even further, further, further back. Now, it was used in ancient times with the bowl, as you can see, with the many, many holes. Okay, the water would drop, 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 and then over the course of a few buckets, it would drop, 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 and then at the end of the bucket, I have a, like a bucket there, and I have a stick, 
And then as the water rises, it will be able to tell you the time exactly of where the water rises. And it will measure the time exactly. Oh, wow. Yes, that's right, Kiana. That is right. Now, Miss Annie is looking at the amazing Archibald Land. And I want you guys to, when, when, I will send you guys this link. And when you click on the little question mark, yeah, I mean, Sandy, do you want to check on the click on the question mark? Let's have a look at what's on there. Yeah, I'm gonna click. Click the, the let's mark. let's click on the question mark. Yes, so this is an little interactive. Oh, here, here is a question mark. Yes, <laughs> and then here you can see all the little questions and your name, and you can upload your work from the class that we have today, which will be designing an imaginary landscape with your imaginary clock at the end of the lesson. So we're gonna talk about the candle clock and the incense clock first before we do some drawing. There we go. Yeah, we have a few questions. After, mm -hmm. if you finish that, and then next year you'll probably get a prize. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we have a question for you guys. Next one is the candle clock. Now, who has seen the candle clock before? Now, there's a question on the Archibot land as well. Now, I want you, I want to ask you guys, how does a candle clock work? How does it work? Does anybody have any guesses? Of course, you light it with the flame at the top, right? But then, how does it, how does it be able to, how does it tell the time? All right, you have the candle clock. You're very good. Now, how do you think it tells the time? Yes, you have a flame there. And what does a candle do? Does anybody you know have a birthday? You burn the candle, and what happens? It 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 shrinks. It goes. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It shrinks. Very good. Okay, it shrinks. Right now, when it shrinks, okay, it stops. Yes, very good. It slowly burns down, and as you see the wax it melts. As it melts, it stops at each different interval, and each interval measures an exact measurement of time. And sometimes what the ancient people also used to do is they would put a little metal coin inside there. And when the wax melts, what happens? The coin, ding, going to fall down. And then what does that tell you? It's going to tell you that it, have, it has reached this exact level. Oh, this is ancient knock clock. <laughs> that's right. So then that's another type of clock besides the water clock and the sundial. Because, you know, what happens if it's, you know, you're indoors? You can't use a big water clock indoors. You can't use a sun when you're indoors. That's crazy. Yeah. That's really good. And also, in the raining time, cloudy time, you can't use a sundial as well. That's right. And as we saw before from the video that Miss Annie showed us with the backgrounds, you know, the earliest surviving candle clock that we can see originated in Han China around 200 BC. Now, that was at least 2,000 years ago. Now, these early Chinese candles were made from whale fat. Okay, that was the materials. You know, nowadays we use beeswax or we use um, different types of uh, like oils, waxes, like um, soy wax. Now, during the Middle Ages, tallow candles were the most commonly used. And by the 13th century, candle making had become a guild craft where they had different groups of masters who made candles. And then in England and France, they formed guilds to make candles and they use these candle clocks for a very long time. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about this one. Okay, this one. Have you guys seen this little one? Remember? Really old the record. That's right, that's true. So we're gonna talk about over the course, we're gonna talk about the candle clocks, and now we're gonna talk about the hourglass. Now, has anybody have a little timer? Has anybody a little timer? A little hourglass? Have you ever flipped one before? You have one, that is really good. Now, it's really, really cute and it measures an exact amount of time. 30 and seconds. From German. Oh, did the last one time. minute, <laughs> two minutes, 30 minutes. The bigger they are, the more sand goes through, the longer the time that they can run for. Now, did you know that hourglasses were very exact and they used them for hundreds and hundreds of years before they actually used another type of clock, which is the swinging one, the pendulum clock, and we'll actually talk about that later on. Okay, now. See, this one, one is one. a sculpture from the park. Very interesting. Okay, now one laugh clock. This is the laugh clock that we saw from the videos, and it was actually beautiful. Now, this one's actually an incense clock. Now, what kind of materials 
do you think incense were made from guys incense something that you can burn right so what kind of materials very good wood bamboo very smart guesses okay very smart yeah bamboo wood flower yes actually they were flowers were one of the ingredients that were put inside incenses to make them smell nice yes and they put wood in there as well the scraped wood to put them into like little packs and they're like squish them into sticks that's correct <laughs> coal i don't think they used coal um they mainly use tree resin now this is the sticky stuff that comes from the trees so they use flowers very good one they have seeds okay and then they use roots the roots of plants the roots of different trees and also bark like tree bark not exactly the tree itself but the tree bark they crush it up once they form it they have the flowers for the scent they have the wood for the burning aspect and then when you burn them slowly the scent will come out and the incense cloths were actually invented in india okay everyone but they were popularized in china during the song dynasty now this survives much as time by burning incense sticks and it burns at a very 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 equal length now this type of incense stick is very interesting because it's flat and at the bottom over there you can see it's like they put a little bit of metal there and then as the incense like burns right a little piece of metal will fall down clink 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 at exact oh, cool. intervals and then another type of incense cloth is the spiral one that's really really cool the spiral one those are bigger and they burn for much longer now we have actually gone and reached the end of our amazing little clock discussion now can anybody think of any other clocks that ancient people used or we use nowadays that we haven't covered let's do a little brainstorm yeah we talked about the little pendulum clock that i mentioned earlier now what kind of other clocks can you guys think of very good analog and digital clocks very nice like you have your watch yes your wristwatch your roman watch not roman clocks hmm what kind of clocks that we can think of or even not clocks but time measuring right time measuring devices how did people measure time yeah we have a watch very good atomic clock yes very good atomic clocks were actually <laughs> invented i think like when people started to travel into space and they needed an exact exact measurement of time because it's very important everything has to be exact when traveling to space you can't be having can't have any mistakes <laughs> stopwatch yes stopwatch is another one very nice <laughs> if you're not sure that's okay we can do a bit of um brainstorm get a research yeah uh, what about grandfather clocks everyone grandfather clocks everyone seen those really big ones with the swinging pendulums inside yeah all right very nice guys okie dokies concrete clock smartwatch very nice yes everybody i think everyone pretty much has a smartwatch these days very nice guys <laughs> thank you for the discussion everybody okay now we're going to have a little drawing exercise okay remember how we saw some different ancient civilizations and the different clocks that belong to those civilizations i want you guys to grab your favorite you know your favorite color or lead pencil or a texture or a marker and then we're going to design i want you to guys to design a little landscape okay a little landscape and i want you to design your mystical land um a mystical like scenario a setting and yes you guys can have the link for archibot land you guys can answer questions or you guys are welcome to draw a little landscape and you can design or if you don't want to do landscape we're going to design a little clock and i know some students previously they designed an amazing unique clock i remember hannah designed one with the tea leaves right so you guys are welcome to go on that little website at the bottom um and have a look okay at that and then answer the questions that you can see on there and if you like instead we can draw some different clocks and then at the end of this one i want you guys to stay with me because we are going to look at a virtual firework video because today is new year's eve today's new year's eve so we're going to talk a little bit about the different fireworks 